Guys, we got a very, very special guest in the studio with us today. Ariana Huffington's here. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Great to be on the show. This is YouTube Nation. How does it feel? I love it. It's absolutely beautiful. I want to move half post here. Can we partner? <laughs> so just so you guys know, Ariana is my former boss, and it was one of the true pleasures of my life to work at HuffPost. And I never have been in a culture like that before, where you encouraged everybody to unplug and recharge and really take care of themselves in addition to the work we were doing. So thank you, first of all. And why is that a culture that you want to build at the office? Because I really believe, and the science now validates that ancient wisdom, that when we get enough sleep, take pauses during the day, meditate, uh, walk, work out, we are actually more effective, more creative, more productive, and happier. So we've been living under this collective delusion that burnout is the way to success. It's not true. The science is conclusive. Sleep, for example, is uh, the best thing we can do for our health, our mental clarity, and our creativity. You're getting seven to eight hours, I hear. Yeah, around that, yeah, pretty good. And at the Huffington Post, remember, we have two nap rooms. They're pods, guys. So Ariana set up basically these little pods. People can climb into them and take a nap at work. Right, and at the beginning, people were saying, who is going to be seen walking into a nap room in the middle of the afternoon? Now they are perpetually full. <laughs> Although I must say, Jacob, the other day I was walking by one of them, and I saw two people coming uh -oh. out. <laughs> so I thought to myself, whatever it takes to recharge you, just don't tell HR. Yeah, okay? don't tell HR at all. So let's talk about Thrive. First of all, how many books have you written? Like 12 books, right? No, 14. Four, excuse me, 14. I got to get them all on my shelves. So Thrive is the 14th book, The Surprise Baby. I didn't think I would have. Uh, but I wrote it because seven years ago, I actually collapsed from burnout, sleep deprivation, and exhaustion, hit my head on my desk, broke my cheekbone, got four stitches on my right eye. And that was like the beginning of my asking myself these big questions that we stop asking after college, like what's a good life, what's success? And we think of success now just in terms of these two metrics of money and power, which is like trying to sit on a two-legged stool. You fall off sooner or later. And so when you talk about the third metric, there's money, there's success and power, and then the third one is what? The third metric consists of four pillars, well-being. If we don't get, take care of our own health and well-being, everything else is meaningless. The second is wisdom, you know, our wisdom, intuition, creativity. How do we tap into them when we are so hyper-connected to our devices? The third is wonder. You know, I want to bring joy into our daily lives. And that makes us more effective at everything. And the fourth is giving. So these are the four pillars of the third metric. And it's, that's like the third leg of the stool. I, so I was telling Ariana, I was listening to the audiobook on the way to work today. And it makes you feel good. It makes you feel good to hear um, somebody say, take care of yourself, you know, feel good about yourself, don't worry about everything else. Actually, yes, that's one of the nicest things is that people, it's almost like as though we're giving them permission to do what's good for them, yeah. which seems like insane because I, they don't need my permission to do it. But I think because the book has so many stories from myself, from other people, as well as the science, this is real. This is not just some flaky, new agey, Californian thing. Sorry. <laughs> you know, this is based on a lot of modern science and uh, with a lot of quotes from people like Steve Jobs, who said the best ideas he had in his life that came, that led to the most iconic Apple products, he had when uh, he had been meditating. What are some of the things that you like to do to center yourself? So uh, there are 12 steps in Thrive, and you can pick which is the one that you want to start with. And I pick 12 steps deliberately because we are addicted. We are addicted to our devices. We are addicted to burnout. Uh, the first step that I started with was sleep. I went gradually. I recommend in the book that you increase your sleep by 30 minutes a night. You say sleep your way to the top, which I is pretty good sleep advice. Your way to the top, to the women and to the men. I'm down with that. Me too. <laughs> and uh, the, another step that's really important is at the end of your day, turn off all your devices and gently escort them out of your bedroom. <laughs> it's so hard. But it gets easier. And yeah. then you have a really recharging sleep. And if you wake up in the middle of the night, you're not tempted to go to your data and let your day life with all its problems and challenges intrude into your time for recharging and renewing yourself. Another step that I love uh, is 
at the end of each day, let go of something that no longer serves you. It could be a resentment, a grudge, a project that you are not really going to do. I mean, I gave up, for example, becoming a good skier. Yeah. I decided, you know, I was never going to put enough energy and time into becoming a good skier. And it was very liberating to realize that you can complete a project by dropping it. And then you can concentrate on the things you really want to do. Another step is creating a gratitude list. You know, my daughter Christina, whom you know does that, she, every night she makes a gratitude list, the things she's grateful for that day, and shares it with three friends who send her their gratitude lists. They're all such good steps. I don't want to tell them all of them because you guys have to go buy the book and read the book, of course. Tell me about the flower. What's the flower? So, you know, I, I left my home this morning and um, I picked a gardenia because just when I smell it, it there's this amazing. beautiful perfume and it sort of connects you with that sense of wonder. And, you know, bottom line, Jacob, we now take better care of our smartphones than we take of ourselves. Yes. Like if you have an iPhone, you begin to get alerts, right? 20% battery remaining, 70% <laughs> battery remaining. By about 13%, you rush around to find a recharging shrine, and they're everywhere, you know, in our offices, in our homes, airport, at the airport, yeah. yes. But when I collapsed from burnout and exhaustion, I must have been below 0% battery remaining, and I wasn't even aware of it. Mm. So by, just by increasing our awareness of how we're feeling, and uh, prioritizing certain things from ourselves, for ourselves, we're going to be better at everything. Well, one of the things that you push people to do is just check in with themselves, that, you know, feel our gut feelings and our instincts about how we should behave and how we should treat ourselves and other people. Talk about intuition a little bit. Yes, you know, it's kind of amazing how often we ignore the red flags, we ignore our own uh, intuitive feelings, our gut feeling, and uh, that's because either we're burnt out or our mind as a kind of an override. But when we learn to trust our own intuition, it's just amazing how life is transformed. Then you know, our intuition is different from the negative voice in our head that I call the obnoxious roommate living in my head. You know, the one that- My wife I, calls it her husband. <laughs> well, actually, I was on Stephen Colbert's show recently and I told him that my obnoxious roommate sounds exactly like him. <laughs> But you know, it's that voice that puts us down, a voice of self-doubt that, that questions all our dreams. Mm. That's different from our intuition. And when we learn to distinguish between the two, we are more able to tap into our own strength. Guys, you gotta pick up the book right now. It's called Thrive, it's by Ariana. Huffingtonpost.com slash thrive is where you can find all the information that you need. What else do they need to know? You know, they can participate in this campaign that we have, hashtag how I thrive. Oh, I love it. And just tell us how you thrive. It's like exchanging thriving recipes and we can all learn from each other. Great. That was awesome. He's good. You're good. <laughs>